So throughout my PhD, I had to get definitely a lot better at coding. So throughout this video, I wanna give you three tips to upgrade your coding game and to get in the flow always and have deep working sessions throughout your life. So let's get straight into it. So in general, if I have a good coding day, I would say it looks something like this. I have one deep working session in the morning, one deep working session in the afternoon, and sometimes one deep working session in the evening. And if I have one in the evening, that is definitely a really good day. So a deep working session refers to a period of focused and uninterrupted work during which an individual engages in highly concentrated and productive work. It's a state of flow where one can fully immerse themselves in a task, maintaining high levels of concentration and engagement and I think this is the most important so during coding you don't only want to spend the time but you also want to have the full attention and there are several ways to increase your attention whilst also increasing the amount of coding time that you spend so one of the things that I immediately want to recommend you is to work with ChatGPT and of course there has been quite a lot of disruption by ChatGPT and also by the code interpreter for example saying that data sciences will be replaced pretty soon by ChatGPT and I don't think this is true I think actually that ChatGPT won't replace programmers or data scientists I think actually data scientists and programmers that use ChatGPT will replace people that don't know how to use it so I definitely rec highly recommend to keep up to date with the latest news and try the tools out yourself so there are two that I quite like within AI and that's just ChatGPT and the code interpreter and Notion AI both of them I use quite a lot for for my programming and for my thinking during my PhD. So in general, I kind of use it as a rubber duck. So the idea is that when a programmer encounters a problem or a bug in their code, they explain the issue step-by-step step to an inanimate object, such as a rubber duck, as if they were teaching how to solve the problem. And that's kind of how I use ChatGPT, not as my teacher, but more as my co-programmer or like a programming assistant. And I definitely think this can help you stay in your workflow because I noticed we before that sometimes I would really get bogged down onto one really specific problem and now I can just ask ChatGPT and get over that little hump really fast. So, so I also wanted to give a little shout out to UPDF, the sponsor of today's video. So I've been using UPDF for a little while now to annotate all my PDF files and one feature that I personally really really like is that you can actually add text to already existing PDF files. So if you need to adjust a PDF or just put in some mnemonic such that you can remember the PDF a little bit better. This is an amazing feature. Another tool that they've added lately is AI such that you can make custom bullet points of your PDF files or even translate it fully to another language, which I think is super duper cool. So check the UPDF out. And they've also given a discount code for all my subscribers such that you can get 54% off your first purchase such that you can use all the pro features. So check UPDF out and let's get straight back into the video. So programming for long hours can definitely be really challenging and I think one of the most challenging bits is that it can be quite repetitive without knowing exactly what the end goal is. So one of the ways that I solve that is to have really clear goals and of course people always say like you need to have these really practical goals but I can definitely imagine if you're like me and you're working more in a high level programming <laughs> field that you don't always know what your goals are. So for me what I always have in mind are actually the visual images that I want my code to spit out in a sense. So for example, if I do an optimization problem, I always have the final optimization image in my mind that I want to create. Or if I am creating a deep neural network, I kind of have in mind what kind of shape I want the data output to be at the end. And the same is now I'm working on a genetics project and I usually have pretty clear in my mind what I want the final images to be like. And I think this is highly dependent if you're more a visual person or more a person that thinks in language but I think if you are a visual person and you usually think more in images and less in text I think it's really good to create kind of like a vision board 
as if you're creating a script for a movie for each step of your coding program and that you want to see what it will give out. And I think also that makes the whole entire coding game way more a creative process instead of solely a cognitive process. And also something that I've really learned dur during my PhD is these kind of triggers that get you into the flow state pretty easily. And I think that is to keep your environment always the same. So I used to be, as a student, I used to love going to coffee shops, for example, or going to different places and code everywhere I could. But I think as a PhD student, I kind of realized that it's a little bit better to have a few set places that you can get into the same mindset and that you do the same work every day. So it's kind of this idea of having your um, perfect environment. And I don't think this has to be like some expensive cafe or like you have to get a really expensive desk set up. But I think actually for me, the best is just to go to university and work at my desk there. And because I go there every day lately, I really noticed that every time that I go there, it's pretty easy to enter into this full focused zone without really trying too hard. And if you're working on attention or focus, I recommend this video next and otherwise see you next week. Bye.